Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Custo query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the 10th session in the Custo query language beginner series. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first basic queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. In the last session, we learned how to work with time values. In today's session, we'll learn how to use search, get schema, and extend. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. Today's session focuses on get schema, extend, and search. These will be the last new operators and predicates that we'll learn in the beginner series. To end the series, we'll learn how to debug queries so we know how to fix problems if our queries fail. We'll also have a series of quizzes and challenges to help review and solidify all the material in the beginner series before moving on to the intermediate series. At the end of the beginner series, you should have a solid foundation on the basics of the KQL language and be able to build your own basic queries. In previous videos, we explored different ways to find information of value when we weren't sure exactly where to look. Another useful way to find information in our data sets when we're not sure exactly where to look is to use the search operator. Search allows you to conduct either a narrow search on a single field or a broad search. Search is not limited to one table, and you can search many data sets to find information of value. Before we talked about the concept of optimizing your query to reduce the amount of resources required. If you use search on many tables, it will consume large amounts of resources, and in many cases it can fail. In some cases, all of your data sets combined could potentially have billions of records, and it's possible for your query to fail. When searching, just like writing any other type of query, it's always best to narrow down your data set as much as possible. Let's start by using the Log Analytics demo environment with a sign-in logs table. If you need access to this free demo environment, you can find instructions on video 7 of the beginner series. In the first example, we're searching the sign-in logs table for Azure Portal. When we look at the results, we can see the app display names have Azure Portal. The results can be found in any of the fields in the table. When used in this way, search is the same as using has. If we place an asterisk after the string, it's equivalent to using starts with. If we place an asterisk before, it's the same as using ends with. If we place an asterisk on both sides of the string, it's equivalent to contains. In these examples, we were searching the entire table. We can also search in a single field. In this example, we're searching only the location field for the FR country code. If we wanted to search multiple conditions, we can use OR or AND. In this case, records will display if either the location field has FR or the app display name field has Azure. In the previous examples, we were either searching one table or one field in a table. We can also do a global search in all tables. This takes a large amount of processing power and can easily time out. So if you know which data sets to look in, it's better to narrow down your search first. In this case, we aren't identifying a single table, and instead we're searching all tables for the IP address of 40.78.229.33. When the results come back, we can see there's a new field titled dollar sign table, which identifies what table the information in the record came from. We can then use distinct on the dollar sign table field to see all the tables that had that IP. This can help us form a new query using where statements with more narrow parameters.
since a global search of all tables uses up large amounts of processing power to go over large amounts of information, and narrowing down the search is best practice, we can filter the timestamp to make the query more efficient. In this example, we're searching all tables for strings of YouTube. We filter the results to records with a timestamp of July 15th or newer, then sort the results by timestamp. In this case, the limited results come back rapidly, even though we're searching all the tables. If you need to search two or more tables and you already know the names of the tables, you can significantly narrow down the focus of your search. In this example, we want to search all tables for Google. First, we use distinct to show all the tables that contain Google. Next, we want to narrow down the search to only the container log in AVS syslog tables. We can use search in followed by the names of the tables we want to search. And lastly, we add the search term in quotations. When we get the results, we can see records from both tables along with all the column values. In previous lessons, we used project to narrow down the output data set to only the fields of interest. If we need to create a new field that doesn't exist, we can use extend. In this example, we can use the usage table and take 10 records as a sample. We can see the quantity field and the quantity unit field. In this example, let's make a new field titled GB. When we use extend to create the new field, first we have to identify the name we want to call the new field. And in this case, we'll call it GB. In this case, we want to perform math on the quantity field and divide it by 1000 to represent GB. We can then manipulate the data in the GB field like we would any other column. In this case, we want to sort by GB in descending order. Both extend and project can be used in many different ways, and we'll introduce new ways to use these two operators later in the intermediate series. In previous sessions, we expanded a table and were able to see the different data types in the left-hand column. We can also see the data types by using get schema. The schema in a table places order to each field, including the data types contained in the field. When we use the get schema operator, we see the data types listed. In the intermediate series, we'll learn how to change the data types in a field. But for now, this gives us two different ways to identify the data types contained in a table, which can help us troubleshoot issues. For homework, write a query that searches all tables in the log analytics demo environment for the IP of 185.125.190.23. Make sure the query also identifies all the table names the IP was found in. That's all for this session on search, get schema, and extend. In the remaining sessions in the beginner series, we'll learn how to debug errors in our queries and have quizzes and challenges to test your knowledge before moving on to the intermediate series. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.